one of the most dynamic and spectacular fighters in the history of the sport. So it's been a while since we've done this. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little while, yeah? What have you been up to in this time? Just, just behaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. Yes, I know that you're always behaving. But in terms of life, I mean, we see your life on Instagram and, and you do post a lot, but then we don't know exactly what you're doing. Have you been enjoying the time off? Have you missed the sport? Of course I've missed the sport. I've missed competing. It's good to be back now. We're close to another contest. I'm very, very excited. Very happy that coming to the end of a lot of hard work, a lot of heavy, heavy rounds. Now it's just focusing on the weight and then do what I love to do, compete in front of millions of people, my fans all over the world. You're a star among stars now, Connor. What does that feel like for you? I don't know, I don't really pay attention to that. I just live my life. Life is good. I don't really pay attention to fame and those type of things. I never seek that in the first place. It's not something that interests me. Fortune, however. <laughs> Certainly, you've, you've gotten both fame and fortune. Has it been hard to manage this newfound fame and fortune? Um, it's just something that you've got to deal with. You've got to learn finances and how to control and manage and build finance like you've got to learn how to box or like you've got to learn how to grapple. So that's the way I approach it, like another discipline. And I'm doing pretty well at, at this time. I'm still, I'm still learning the game, still growing my empire and, and enjoying it very much. But make no mistake, competing inside the octagon in, in a full on fight is what, uh, what I'd love to do the most. So I'm very, very happy to be back. Yeah, and we're happy to have you back. But we had that fight with Floyd Mayweather last summer. What did you take from that experience as a whole? It was, a, it was an experience to go into a completely different game. New media, new, new people, new fans, new, new questions. Just a new, new experience. And anytime you put yourself into an uncomfortable situation, you will grow as a person. So that's what happened to me. I put myself out there, put myself into an uncomfortable situation, a situation I'm not as familiar with. And, and that's it. I, I grew as a person, as a fighter, as an athlete. Now here I am back into, into my game, the game I run. It's good to be back here under MMA and ready to go again. Did you know Muhammad Ali's daughter and her family were rooting for you in that fight? I did not know. I know Floyd has been very disrespectful towards Muhammad Ali. I was actually quite shocked when I heard of it and saw it, but maybe that is uh, one of the reasons why, but um, that's good to, good to know. Yeah, I should show you the quote. She had some phenomenal things to say about you. She said she's watched your entire career and that you are sort of the epitome of what her dad was. From the way you speak to the way you perform, it reminds her of her dad, and that's why they root for you. I appreciate that very much. I always appreciate the, the comparison. I'm quick to say I am not anywhere close to Muhammad Ali. That, that, that was a special man, and I am just a simple young kid from Crumlin, Dublin, Ireland, and I'm here looking for a fight. I like how you still think of yourself that way, because I think all of us see that you are changing things for a lot of people. What's been sort of your proudest accomplishment so far? The birth of my son, without hesitation. <laughs> That's the next champion. Make no mistake about that. Do you, you look at life differently or how you make decisions differently because you have him now? Of course, everything is for my little family. You treat your friends like family as well. Before the teams got involved, in this uh, matchup between you and Habib. Was that a fight you wanted? Did you want him next? I was excited about, about competing against him, more so than Tony. I know Tony had, a, had, a, had a, an interim title also, but I was a lot more excited about this contest, you know, an unbeaten fighter. Khabib Nurmagomedov! He is undefeated, 26 and 0. I'm not really impressed that much by his record. It's a pretty looking record, but if you dig deep, it's not It's not that pretty. I think it's it's very deceiving. And everyone seems to put him on a pedestal. He's, he's this, he's that, and I don't see it. He's a bit timid when it comes to, this, to taking a shot. He does not like to take a smack. Look at that! Oh! But I am going to having some moments now. If you don't like to take a smack and you fight me, you're in for a long, long night. Do you feel like Habib's a fake champion? I mean, he fought an unranked novice, we'll say. I don't believe he's, he is champion. I don't believe, believe Ferguson is champion. I, I believe they know that, especially now that the real champion is back. Do you feel like people are maybe taking the wrong approach to facing him? I just know what I see, and I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go and do it. What are you going to do? I'm going to knock him clean out. You just had that press conference in New York City with Habib. What was that experience like for you? It was just another day, but I mean, coming back, seeing the man first time, just another day for me. It went well. I, I was happy with it. You certainly had a lot of 
verbal sparring, I guess, with Habib. What did you take away from that face-off? Did you see anything in him or? I literally saw the blood run from his face. Look at his lips. His lips turned blue. It was a weird response I saw, so. You know, this is gonna be a star-studded event. You seem to thrive in those situations, but do you even pay attention to them while they're happening, or is it something? You know, after the Mayweather fight, I heard, I kept hearing about people that was there, and I was like, no, no way, I didn't know they were there. <laughs> I was looking to see them. I mean, hey, it, it is what it is. It's good that, that I guess, we are entertaining world-renowned entertainers, so that's, that's, that's a good feather in the cap for, for, for ourselves, you know. There's a lot of dedication and a lot of sacrifice that goes into this game. It's good to be back. It's good to be close. It's what I love to do the most, more than anything, more than any fame, more than any finance. Competing under those bright lights is the true test of, of your character, so. Are you glad this fight's in Vegas? I am happy it's in Vegas here. Yeah. I love Vegas. Vegas is the fight capital of the world. I've fought here many times. Las Vegas deserves this. How do you think it's going to go fight week? People around supporting the event will enjoy the festivities of fight week. The UFC put on a great show uh, all through fight week. A lot of fan-friendly uh, events. The Irish will be out in force. Everyone's going to have a great time, and that's it. But that side will do what they are told and show up on fight night and get their ass whooped. It's always fun to interview you in these settings, and I can just tell when we change topics, you you kind of change how you respond to things, especially with Habib. You seem to be more invested in it. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, is this one different for you? Mentally, is this one different for you? It's pretty similar, to be honest. I just have a little bit more. There's a little bit more fuel in my engine, in my tank for this one. A bit more fire to go out and, and inflict harm on this man, so. But in there, I will be calm, I will be composed, and I will be ruthless, the same way I am with anyone, because that's the way I have to be, because it's either me or him. And if that's the case, then it's always gonna be him. You are a two-weight champion for the UFC. I've got to imagine you still have big goals like that. You're the first person to ever do it simultaneously for the organization. What's the next big picture thing for you? Right now, I'm focusing on my weight, focusing on this bout, and we'll see after that. We'll see how things progress. There's a lot of upcoming fights. Tony and Pettis are fine, Dustin and Nate. There's also Tyron had a win against Till for 170 pound belt. There's also talk maybe of George. There's also talk of a 165 pound division. There's a lot of things in the, in, in the pipeline. So I'm keeping a close eye on everything and we'll see where it goes. Well, we're interested in your fight. So first round knockout you're predicting? Yes. Do you feel like your striking is the answer here? Yeah, 100% my striking will be the answer, but I hope there is grappling exchanges. I hope I don't go in here and just spark this man real quick. I've heard many people say I'm just a left-handed fighter, which is very disrespectful to me. There's, there's many skills in my arsenal. I hope we get a chance to show that and we can make a fight out of it and, and I can showcase some skills that maybe have been forgotten by the mixed martial arts public who have saw me compete in the boxing belt last year. Here I am, returned to take back my throne. We will be there watching. We appreciate your time, Connor. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. As always, thank you.